A very good evening to all our viewers and welcome to a brand new edition of News First Weekend coming to you live from our News First Studios in Colombo. I'm Arundhati Mudanayaka and let's start off with a look at the stories making headlines this evening. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa and 28 former parliamentarians joined the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna. UNP former parliamentarians speak about the leadership of the party. SDF protection provided for several state institutions. Body of a German tourist who fell from the world's end found at an estate in Palanguda. World leaders commemorate the centenary of the armistice that ended World War I. And now the story is in detail. The United Nations General Secretary and the European Union has issued statements regarding the situation in Sri Lanka. The UN Secretary General underlines the utmost importance of respecting democratic processes and institutions and resolving differences in accordance with the rule of law and due process. According to the statement, the UN Secretary General renews his call on the government to ensure peace and safety for all Sri Lankans and uphold its commitments to human rights, justice and reconciliation. The European Union says the decision of President Sirisena to dissolve the Sri Lankan parliament ahead of its planned reconvening risks undermining public confidence in the country's democratic institutions and processes and further deepens the political and economic crisis in the country. A fully functioning parliament is an essential pillar of democracy. As a long-standing supporter of a democratic Sri Lanka, the European Union expects a swift and peaceful resolution of the current crisis in line with the Sri Lankan constitution. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party says that they will be contesting the upcoming election with a broad alliance that will include 10 political parties. General Secretary of the SLFP, Professor Roshan Lakshman Priyadasa, said that the leadership of the party will not be making hasty decisions based on minor incidents but will focus on emerging victorious at the upcoming election. Our main objective right now is to create a broad alliance. We will be led by President Maitri Palasirisena, the leader of our party, in forming this alliance. The President has given the general public the opportunity to vote at an election without even considering the threat to his life. So at this moment, we will form a broad alliance headed by the Sri Lanka Freedom Party to face the general election. We have provided leadership to the country as the Mahajana Eksat Peramuna, the Samagi Peramuna and the United People's Freedom Alliance. This time too, we will be focused on creating such a broad alliance. We are currently acting with patience and looking at the facts analytically so that it does not harm the core of our objectives. Now, those were the views expressed by General Secretary of the SLFP, Professor Rohana Lakshman Piyadasa. Meanwhile, Rani Vikramasinghe continues to remain at Temple Trees. A number of press briefings were held there today. Let's take a look at some of the views that were expressed. Maitri Palasiri Sena has received some startling news. Mahindra Rajapaksa and his group has decided to contest from the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna. We will be going to the Supreme Court tomorrow. The United National Party is not scared of elections. This is a party with many leaders. Now our people have begun to realize the value of democracy. We must be thankful to Maitri Palasiri Sena for giving us the opportunity to go for an election. Just like he pulled out his trump cards, when we pull out our trump cards, all we can say is that he will be finished. Yes, he has much favour among the general public. He has a lot of value. Many are asking for Sajid Premadasa without considering party divisions. So it is the responsibility of our leaders to take that decision as a party. However, we will be formulating our second step based on the decision given by courts. You saw the tactics and methods we employed in the past. We use the right tactics and procedures. He is the mastermind behind all of this. Don't be afraid. He will do the right thing at the right time. 
When the person who defrauded housing projects is appointed as the Minister of Housing and the person who stole from Satusa is appointed as the Minister in charge of Satusa, we are inclined to think that this is some sort of madness. With the current situation, there is a rift among them. There is also a decrease of their grassroots voter base by about 30%. And as Parliament was dissolved, all the young MPs who got elected from the United People's Freedom Alliance joined the Pohutua. When the group who left with Maitri Palasiri Sena don't get their nominations, they will join us. <laughs> The general public believes that new leaders should come forward. Ranil Vikramasinghe has been the leader of the UNP for 24 years, nearly close to a quarter of a century. So there is a call for change. The people have made us aware of that. So we must listen to the people if we are to win. Now if Ranil Vikramasinghe resigns from the post of leader of the party, there is a call from our party supporters for Sajid Premadasa to become the leader of the UNP. They have told this to us. The TNA says they plan on going to courts against the dissolution of parliament by going against the 90th amendment to the constitution. TNA's stance is that they have violated the 19th amendment to the constitution. When they dissolved government, they did not go by the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. The opposition leader and the leader of the TNAR, Sammandan, will file a case in court tomorrow, demanding the reinstatement of the previous government. We also insist on hearing the case tomorrow itself. At court, we will insist that the President must act upon the Gazette notification that said the Parliament will be reconvened on the 14th. We hope that the court will give the ruling before the 14th. In a way, in email, uh, JVP's Propaganda Secretary Vijita Herath explained their stance if the parliament was convened on the 14th. He made this statement at a seminar held in Kegol yesterday. Yesterday, the UNP had 98 ministers, six from our party, altogether 104. With 15 TNA votes, they had 119 against this conspiracy. When they got to know they can't get the majority of 113, they broke the rules of the constitution. We said we'll be defeating the conspiracy. We did just as we said. President doesn't have the power to dissolve the parliament. We are requesting the election commission not to accept this. Don't accept this gazette. This gazette notice is going against the constitution. That is not legal. Election commission doesn't have any right to go for an election according to it. Therefore, we request the election commission not to accept this. <laughs> A meeting organized by the JVP titled Protect Democracy was held in Watavala, Hatton today. Dr. Nalina Jayatissa of JVP addressed the meeting. We are completely against the political conspiracy. This is a political conspiracy. Is this a fair election? Why did they give ministries if they knew they were going to dissolve parliament in minutes? They know that the ministers do not get dissolved after the parliament gets dissolved. When the parliament is dissolved, the cabinet does not get dissolved. Then the ministers can use the vehicles and the officials of the ministries for the election. Why did they give the Ministry of Housing to Vimal knowing that the parliament was going to be dissolved? Did they give it so that he could build houses during election season? What is Mahinda, Sirisena and the group trying to do? They are trying to get the approval of the people to the tasks that they carried out by labelling it as the election. Do you think Mahindra Rajapaksa got rehabilitated? You might not like Ranil Vikramasinghe. Even we do not like him. Ranil Vikramasinghe should be thrown away from the seat of the Prime Minister. We were against Ranil Vikramasinghe. We say he must go. But it should be done constitutionally and legally. We are ready for that. Karu Surya has issued a media release as the former Speaker of Parliament. Former Speaker Karu Jayasuri in his release says as the caretaker of the government he has been carefully inspecting the rights of the people who elected the parliamentarians to represent the general public being taken away forcefully. The Speaker further says that he is ready to face any consequences that arise as a result of his actions. Minister of Urban Planning and Water Supply MLA Hizbullah spoke at an event held in the Kathankuri area in Batiklo last evening. When Sajid Premadasa was offered the position of the Prime Minister, he rejected the proposal stating that he cannot create conflict with Ranil Vikramasinghe. Thereafter, another proposal was brought forward to appoint Nimal Siripala de Silva as the Prime Minister. 
It was in this background that the MPs of the SLFP were summoned by President Sirsena on the 26th of last month and appointed the former president Mahindra Rajapaksa as the Prime Minister. All of this took place within 10 minutes. Mahindra Rajapaksa's wife or son was not even aware of this appointment. The president stated that he would have been murdered if this decision was not made within two to three days. The president further stated that the severity of the death threats he faced had increased and he had removed all security personnel from his residence, closed the road to his house and remained inside. It was under these conditions that we supported our president. The former prime minister held many discussions with powerful countries. He attempted to create an unstable condition by creating conflicts between our president and the Indian prime minister. The president advised the former prime minister regarding this matter. In this background, there was a plot to murder the president at Batiklo. However, the president escaped from this plan and Nalika de Silva was taken into custody. However, the former prime minister, IGP and the former minister of law and order refused to give even a copy of the complaint to the president. The plan was to murder the president and Ranil Vikramasinghe to take over his position and execute his plans in the months to come. <laughs> On to one of our headline-making stories, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa became the leader of the Sri Lanka Podujana Firmuna today at his residence in Vijayarama. Chairman of SLPP, Professor G.L. Piris and many others were present at the occasion of handing over party memberships this afternoon. Professor G.L. Piris presented the membership of the party to Mahindra Rajapaksa. After obtaining the membership, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa gave memberships to 28 MPs who were previously members of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. Mahindra Nandalud Gamage, Anura Priyadarshanayapa, Johnston Fernando, Namal Rajapaksa, Rohit Abeguna Vardhana, Janaka Bandara Tennakon and Lakshmanayapa Bevardhana were among those ministers. We are going for the mandate of the people because it is the people who decide whether the decisions taken by us are right or wrong. The people have that right. I think that if the right is being challenged even at court, it is completely wrong. Simply because it is against the mandate of the people. It is against the supremacy. I don't understand why the groups asking for democracy are afraid when we ask for an election that grants democracy. We will face this election. This election has been called. We will contest the election and we will win. This is a journey where we had to dissolve the parliament to get the favour of the people and build a strong government with the people. I need to remind the fact that as a very broad party, we are ready to contest in the upcoming election. There is no need. With the favour of the people, we are embarking on a journey to build a government for the people. We said the leader of this party is Mahindra Rajapaksa. That came to fruition today. We will contest in the next election from the flower bud. All the forces who love the country united today. We will all get together and work towards the victory of the coming election. I have worked for 30 odd years at the SLFP. That is one of our parties now. As members of the SLPP, we will create a new government. We saw that there were issues between the UNP and the SLFP when governing the country. Our effort was to put a stop to that. As a result of that, all of us were able to unite. We will join hands with the former president and the president and work based on their decisions as members of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna. In the future, we will contest the elections as an alliance established under the leadership of the Pohotua party. The leaders must get together and decide on that. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party had the symbol of the hand. After that, it was the beetle leaf. The Podujana Perumuna was created newly through the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and the United People's Freedom Alliance. When the people are given the opportunity to vote, the notion that it is illegal is surprising. We have given the people the power. I don't think that courts will ever prevent holding of an election. All is set to chase Ranil Vikramasinghe away from the temple trees on the 5th of January. Meanwhile, foreign journalists also questioned Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa after the occasion concluded. So we, we had gone to the people. Let the people decide. If you are wrong, they will vote against us. And what, about, what about the 19th Amendment? What is this 19th Amendment? There is no... I mean, you must read the other sections also. As a whole. As a whole. The Constitution. 
under the constitution we have the right the president has the right to call for election that is not uh, something that is anti democratic you and peace trying to take you to court what do you have to say to that they're so challenging you we'll, and sir we'll, sir yes president. we will go and we are going to meet the lawyers now all right Thank and you. and very confident that uh, that uh, it is going to be uh, that you're going to sweep the polls in january yes definitely because we have already we have gathered it so no one can stop it what about concerns of the international community there are some countries that have come out and commented yeah. why well, I mean, the international community must realize that this is democracy go to the people take their uh, mandate is undemocratic are you saying that it is undemocratic are you going to reach out to the international community oh, and yes, send the same we message will be, we, yes we will reach to them and they must understand our proposition we have already done that and the president has spoken to them uh, then our party leaders have gone and explained to them so i will also meet them and right and uh, finally we are looking at india india has had its own concerns are we looking at a messaging or some kind of uh, reaching out to prime minister narendra modi you met him in i met him i met him and i think he understood me very well also in local news several women's organizations protested against the dissolution of parliament in colombo the protest was held at the liberty roundabout in colombo The protest was organized by the Lakpi Medhini organization and the Women's Collective for Democracy. There was what was called a peaceful candlelit vigil earlier in the evening near the Beri Rilk where our news first reporters were harassed. A silent vigil or a silent protest organized by several civil societies took place this evening near the Bere Lake. Now, uh, several former MPs, including uh, MP Harsha De Silva, Hirnika Premachandra, and Raj Sena Ratna, attended this event. And what they said was the president's action, including making Mahinda Rajapaksa the prime minister and dissolving parliament later on, was undemocratic. and that they do not stand together with these uh, decisions for the news first team i am jamal ratnayaka before this update was given on our prime time 7 o'clock news a few participants had verbally abused news first reporters despite this being a so called peaceful candle lit vigil initially news first was told that this protest was organized by the unp's young professionals association and reported as such This incident is despite News First airing a live update on our primetime news. We would like to remind those who verbally abused our reporters of the bond scam, the Central Highway scandal and the Sri Lankan Airlines scandal and many other multi-billion rupee scams of the recent past. Our question is, would you like us to begin reminding the public of these scandals and those responsible of it at this time? Don't force our hand. Body of the German woman who fell off the world's end in Horten Plains has been found at the Balangoda Nanferial Estate. Police said that she had met with this unfortunate incident when attempting to take a selfie. Police said she had fallen to her death at 7:05 this morning. The 35-year-old deceased was a German national. Patipola Samnalavela and Balangoda police along with the army SDF the air force and the wildlife officials carried out the search operations and later found the body on top of the mountain 10 kilometers away from Nanperia Leste police stated that the german national had come for a visit to sri lanka on the 3rd with a friend measures have been taken to provide special security to several state organizations in view of the prevailing political situation in the country Lake House Publications, Rupaini Corporation, Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation, and ITN have been provided with special security. A senior official of the police STF said that police officers as well as police STF officers have been deployed for the security of these institutions. Apart from this, the Attorney General's Department and the Department of Government Printing have also been provided with police STF personnel. The police STF noted that two teams have been appointed to look into the security of these institutions. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of Weekend Prime Time News. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night.